might be a good game, guys. The Gulf Coast Showcase rolls on with our nightcap here on day one of the women's bracket. It is fourth ranked Iowa taking on the Mastodons of Purdue Fort Wayne. Welcome in everyone. I'm John Vitas alongside Marin Walseth. And oh boy, the, the crowd is certainly taking it up a notch here for our nightcap as the Hawkeye fans are here. The fans have been growing as the day has gone on. Love to see Iowa Hawkeye fans travel well but also local high school and youth girls basketball players, teams, parents, fans here to see an elite team play. But let's not look past this Purdue Mastodon team. They've got nothing to lose. Talking with their staff earlier, they're here to play, to get better, to have a lot of fun. And boy, they're going to have some fun in what becomes a hostile environment here at the Gulf Coast Showcase. A lot of Midwesterners retire to this area and, of course, uh, with Iowa in the top five in the country, their fans traveling as well from Iowa City down to southwest Florida. The last quarterfinal of the day, the winner to face FGCU, the local team, and the loser will face Delaware tomorrow night. We are ready. Iowa in the white, Purdue Fort Wayne in the black, and right away, Hannah Stolke rolls to the rim, and Iowa's got the lead. Stolke establishes the inside game, which is only going to make it easier for the perimeter players. Well, Mastodon's just going to look to find their footing, be secure with the basketball, and maybe make some shots. As the three is good. Beautiful shot from Amelia Bromenschenkel. Molly Davis went behind the screen and was and paid for it. Caitlin Clark's on the board early. Oh, a quick response from Caitlin Clark. 30 points per game, widely considered the best in the country. This is Marshall from Purdue Fort Wayne. They work it around. Into the corner it goes for Sellers. Her shot is good. Oh, the points are falling early for both teams. If you like offense, you're in the right spot. FGCU put up over 80 in our last game, and here we go off to the races in our evening contest, 7.30 start. Here from Hertz Arena. This is Clark up top, a minute and 15 seconds in. Steps back, does not need a lot of space to operate. Misses the long three, easy rebound for Davis. Around it goes. That one is good. Gabby Marshall connects for Iowa. Gabby Marshall has not been as consistent this year from the three-point line. Good for her to get that first shot down. This is Emerson giving it to Sellers. Sellers fades and missed the two. It's amazing this place comes to a hush when the ball is in play. They are locked into every pass and every shot, waiting to explode on an Iowa bucket. There's Stolke getting inside, missed the first attempt. Defense really crashing hard on her. Around it goes. Marshall tees one up, in and out from the corner. Ball is loose and handled by the Mastodons. This is Emerson bringing it across. Sellers looking back to Audra Emerson, native of Fishers, Indiana. Sellers almost beat her defender there off the dribble and banks it in. Tough shot. Sellers gets it to go, and we're tied at eight. Sellers was able to use her guide hand there, her off hand, to hold off the taller Kate Martin. Clark steps on the gas pedal, had it stripped. It'll stay with the Hawkeyes. 
This, of course, an Iowa team that went to the national championship game a year ago, suffering an early defeat here in the regular season to Kansas State, who is in the field here at the Gulf Coast Showcase. Marshall splashes home another. Two as, early threes for Marshall. As good as Caitlin Clark is, she does need her supporting cast. And for Gabby Marshall to go two for three here early in the first three minutes speaks well for Iowa. There's a good look and a connection from Audra Emerson. Is this the tournament that everyone's going to make threes? <laughs> Certainly in our night session, we've seen a ton of made threes. But you got to love the Mastodons rising to the occasion here in Southwest Florida against Iowa. Lob inside, Stolke will kick. Clark down the baseline, into contact, draws the foul. Caitlin Clark turned down that three. Got herself inside the arc, drew the contact. As all of us know, she's such a prolific scorer, can score in so many different ways. But being able to take contact, something she's definitely grown into as her career has advanced. Converts on the first free throw, comes in through the first five games, averaging 30 points, eight rebounds, and seven and a half assists. If you're going to nitpick any number on her stat line, 42% from the field, certainly not a poor number, but one that I'm sure she hopes to improve. And she's taking a lot of shots, right around a third of the shots for the season for Iowa. There's a nice move in the lane. Crowd wanted to travel, but it falls for Brominschenkel. So we're tied. Macedon's matching Iowa shot for shot here in the first four minutes. This is a falter. Clark steps back for two. Got it! Plus the foul. Caitlin Clark may have rolled her ankle just a bit but she is off to an outstanding start. And that's why that foul is called, to protect the shooter, Caitlin Clark, but every shooter. The defenders must allow that offensive player to come down without contact. Looking to extend the lead to three, and that rattles out. Fight for the rebound, and it'll be a jump ball, and the arrow favors the Mastodons. Another sub coming in for Iowa before our first media timeout. That is Sharon Goodman, redshirt junior. Along with a falter, two subs already in for Lisa Bluter's team. The Iowa Hawkeyes are going to go from person to person to a 2-3 zone. It starts looking like a 1-1-3. It really is a 2-3 zone. They're going to go back and forth, trying to keep Fort Wayne out of rhythm offensively. A kick and a long three, no good from uh, Schweiderman. The freshman is not necessarily a post player. She does have range, but she's going to play that interior spot today. Goodman is there to clean things up for Iowa, and they've got their largest lead. There's a pull-up, Sellers missed it short. Mastodon's dropping back on defense, not going after the offensive boards. A falter handles, and it gets it to Clark. They post up Goodman. Martin curls through. Lost the handle on the baseline, and it's going to be out of bounds to Fort Wayne. Kylie Fearback checking in for Iowa, as is Molly Davis returning. As Coach Bluter already cycling in different players. Ryan Ott, number four, is in for Purdue Fort Wayne. So Emerson brings it up down by four. A lot of scoring here early. Sellers turns. Has to kick. That is Aaron Woodson throwing it away. Iowa wants to run. A falter all the way in, missed it, got her own miss, and draws the foul. So Sydney, a falter to the free throw line, and a timeout on the floor. We'll introduce you to the third member of our broadcast team when we come back 
You're watching the Gulf Coast Showcase only on Flow Hoops. We bring you back live inside Hertz Arena. We are going to check in with tonight's sideline reporter, Amber Bepko. I know we'll be talking a lot about Iowa and Clayton Clark this weekend, but right now I want to shed some light on Shayla Sellers. Coach Marcusano said herself that since day one of taking over the program, Sellers has bought in from the very get. She has led this team and she's the leader that this team has needed. This summer alone, she was putting in two to three workouts every single day. But that work ethic shouldn't come as a surprise as dad is a former NBA player and she's got a sister over at Maryland as well. So the competitive is, competitiveness is high in that family. And all that hard work has paid off. She's currently leading the team in points and free throw percentage. And keep an eye on her this weekend because she's only 40 points away from cracking into the 1,000 point club. Thank you. Thank you, Amber. And that's some good stuff. Cheyenne Sellers, an excellent player for the Terrapins. And that 1,000-point number should come down this weekend. Every team in the field will play three games, so she only has to average 13 points and change to get there. She's already hit a couple of shots in this one. Basketball families, athletic families, when there's multiple children in different sports, the same sports, makes for uh, competitive youth, back, backyard games, football games. Iron sharpens iron, as they say. Absolutely, and sometimes it happens in you, your very own backyard. Yes, yeah, Shayla and Cheyenne, I'm sure, with their you know, NBA father, a lot of really competitive household basketball games in the driveway, maybe at the park. And it pays off. There she is. Sellers has to give it up. Wing three, a little bit short from Ryan Ott. So danger time here for Iowa. Or I should say for Fort Wayne with Iowa with a, with a chance to add to this six-point advantage. Fearback gives it up. Marshall into the lane. The kick, and Davis tees one up. No good. Weak side rebound handled by Ott. Only 10 players dressed for Purdue-Fort Wayne. 12 on the roster. Two of them are banged up and not available tonight. So it is a short bench for the Mastodons. Pull up from Ott, no good. Fort Wayne's doing a nice job of getting a quality shot and not crashing the offensive glass. There's a nice move inside, but a miss, and Sellers has the rebound. Rather than crash the offensive glass, Fort Wayne is doing a nice job of getting back to help slow the Iowa transition offense. You can't take away everything. Interior, Caitlin Clark, transition, three-point shooting but you can try to slow them down, and that is what Fort Wayne is trying to do. Fort Wayne was dialed in from outside earlier, but as this first quarter wears on, do you feel like the size of Iowa and the pace of the game starts to get to Purdue-Fort Wayne where now they're a little bit off on these threes? The length on the perimeter really causes havoc. Non-traditional shots. The offense has to be two or three feet behind the scoring area, so certainly Iowa's length is a problem for Fort Wayne. So Clark has it up top. We'll see how much they can stretch the lead here before the end of the quarter. There's a beautiful drop step and a finish from Sharon Goodman. Iowa assistant coach Jan Jensen is their post coach. And if you follow co women's college basketball, there's just been a plethora of phenomenal interior play that complements Caitlin Clark for the Hawkeyes. Here we're seeing Sharon Goodman being the recipient, but there's certainly Hannah Stolke's done a great job. Addison O'Grady will also come in. This is Marshall with it for Purdue Fort Wayne. Shot clock down to seven and we have a travel 
back over to the Hawkeyes. We'll keep an eye on the turnovers here. That's only the second one so far for the Massena. And that was because of the length. The ball handler had an idea. The passing lane, lane is taken taken away surely, surely by Iowa's length. Taylor McCabe is in for the Hawkeyes. Clark drops it down low. Goodman with a lefty layup and a chance for three. Caitlin Clark brings two everywhere on the floor, and eyes are up, able to make that little dump down. I'd like to call it a high-low pass, more of a mid-low pass. <laughs> Well, some good touch to put that one softly into the hands of Goodman. When you're that close together, you can't fire it as hard as you ordinarily would as Goodman completes the three-point play. You talk about that pass and that touch. It's important to know that it was a bounce pass. It gives that post player just another split second to see it into our hands. Less than stellar co uh, players will make that a bullet pass from two feet, which is much more difficult to catch. Yes, and a lot of times may end up going out of bounds. There's a good ball fake. Floater is good. There is Broman Schenkel again. Pass ahead. Goodman getting down the court. Waits for her teammates and kicks. Bounce pass to a falter. Good move inside. Draws the foul. More free throws coming for the Hawkeyes. They will shoot the first eight free throws of this opening quarter. Part of it is a style of play, but Iowa is certainly being the aggressor. Posting up. Straight line attacks. Drawing the fouls where Purdue is settling for the jump shot. A short break for Sellers. She is right back in. As a falter lines up the free throws. Oh, misses that one. Knocked down a pair a few moments ago, but misses the first one here. Nine players already used by Lisa Bluter. Eight already in for the Mastodon. So eight of the ten dress players have seen the court. Mastodons are led by head coach Maria Marquesano, who reached the NCAA tournament with Mount St. Mary. Is also a head coach at Walsh and Urbana. Another interesting connection, Marin. She was at Walsh University. That's where Carl Semesco started his head coaching career head coach at fgcu as that one falls pretty three from schwederman and that's the mismatch schwederman is not really a five she's playing the five today but she's got great range and that's going to force hannah sulky stalky and others to play perimeter defense block on sellers iowa still does not have a foul in this opening quarter but iowa being in the bonus Going to get a couple of free throws here. For those of you keeping track of Caitlin Clark's points, she's already up to seven here in the opening quarter. So a free throw here will put her above the pace, which she's been at 30 per game this season. And the first one falls. She better get her points early today because she might not be in in the fourth if they continue to stretch their lead. For all eight teams here, load management is going to be apparent and going to be key to keep the best players fresh that while still securing the wins that they are looking for. Iowa turns it over. A poke away from Purdue-Fort Wayne. This is Casey for three. No good. In the men's tournament, they had the same format. Three games in three days, Monday through Wednesday. And there were a handful of players who, as there's a good cut for Martin, who lays it in. There were a handful of players in that tournament who, with load management, got uh, did not play in the middle game of those three days. A couple guys rolling ankles, but a couple of guys that were healthy scratches as well in that tournament on this court a few days ago. Bounce pass to the baseline. Roman Schenkel got contact and draws the foul on Stolke. The fans are not happy with the call. But credit Broman Schenkel for keeping her pivot. Option A on the, was the shot, not available. Option B was a kick out. All she saw was long arms. Knowing that the three second count was getting close, she was able to put it up. Yeah, here's another look. Got stuck there in the middle of the lane. If they rule that she kept her pivot, but that's a good call. First one is good. It's been nice to see these Mastodons not phased by the situation at all. 
came out matching the Hawkeyes bucket for bucket and still within single digits. Second one is pure, and it's down to an eight-point margin. A couple second differential here, but the veteran leadership here for Iowa, they're going to look for the last shot of this first quarter. Clark, a lot of dribbling, working the shot clock down to about 12. Now she'll go. Fires it to the back door. Extra pass. Stolke had it blocked. No whistle. That was Clea Casey coming in for the strip. And then her pass gets deflected. Four seconds. Here comes Clark. Ahead to Stolke. At the buzzer. It's good. Transition bucket for the Hawkeyes to go up by 10 at the end of one quarter. We're in for a treat, John. We are in for an absolute treat. Clark. Here we see Hannah, Clark, or Hannah Stolke coming, finishing at the buzzer with footsteps behind her. A good finish for Iowa, who has a 10-point lead as we move to quarter number two here on Flow Hoops. We are live here on Flow Hoops. We appreciate you buying a subscription to join us for this Gulf Coast Showcase. Well worth the price of admission, both online and in Hertz Arena. A chance to see Caitlin Clark and these Hawkeyes three days in a row as Martin sends it in. A 10-point lead for Iowa as they have scored 30 in the opening quarter. And now we're seeing a box and one here by Fort Wayne. Kate Martin using her strength, attacking the rim, not phased. That is not a defense you see much of, but with Clark and her stature, makes more sense for sure. There's a dump down and a nice turn and finish for Aaron Woodson. Stolke running the floor, lays it in. They will beat you down the court. That is perfect Iowa transition offense. Inbound to... The coach's hash, hit your sprinting post player for a layup. Stolke getting up and down. Goodman again, or rather Woodson rather, no, nowhere to go. Emerson gives it back to her. Marshall with eight on the shot clock. Another kick, Marshall, two to shoot. Goes over the defender, Drew Iron. Clark wrestles away the rebound. Working one-on-one, -on -one. step back three, book it! Caitlin Clark heating up into double figures. A little shake and bake, just enough to lose her defender for at least her defender's arms to go down. The shot goes up. Not a whole lot you can do to defend that. There's a poke away. Marshall ahead to Clark, three on two. Clark weaves and kicks to Marshall. And Iowa will send it back to Clark. And she walked with it. Would have had an easy layup had they not blown that play dead. But a turnover against Iowa. Too eager. Too eager. <laughs> Did she just move quicker than everybody else, including her own legs, I suppose? And that's what you're seeing. She's saying, hey, I've done a shot fake and attack to the rim before. 
essentially telling the ref, keep up. There's a rebound underneath for Stolke. And Marshall controls with a game-high 15-point lead. Stolke, bounce pass. Oh, Clark tried to go around the back, but it's out of bounds. When teams have a post player that can facilitate from the low block and be such a great passer, really makes them a tough cover. Stolke there saw and was able to deliver a perfect pass to Caitlin Clark. Emerson looking, nowhere to go with it as Iowa works into this zone. They dump it for Schwederman, and there's a walk. That is five turnovers now for the Mastodons. You can see some uh, perplexed looks on, on Purdue Fort Wayne right now. They did a great job hanging tough for a while, but on offense, they, there's just nowhere to go. Martin down the baseline, lost her pivot foot, and she'll travel with it. So five turnovers for each team now. And head coach Lisa Bluter's over there imploring her team to make the easy pass. Not to play slow or conservative, but to make the easy pass. Iowa in that 1-3-1 at the moment. They dump it to Graber, who's in right now for the Mastodons. Marshall lobs, hits her post player. Good move, and a lefty shot goes down for Sydney Graber, a senior from Fort Wayne. Graber showed tremendous patience there. Marshall around the back dribble, swings to Martin. Davis passes, Clark missed the lefty layup. Martin the offensive rebound. Ball is loose and recovered by Davis. And a whistle underneath. It's going against Graber. And Iowa will get it back. That's the first foul of the quarter. Molly Davis set that up with a cross screen from the low block. Guard to big. There's no switching available. Seller's going to come back in for the Mastodons. We also saw Addie O'Grady check in for the first time on the Iowa side. Clark to inbound, finds Marshall. Definitely a mismatch there on the inside for Iowa. Can they get Addison O'Grady the basketball? No, not needed, not needed at all when Caitlin Clark's got that range and feeling it. She is feeling it, 14 points already for Clark. Stover. Now Ott, Marshall with it, trying to find a hole in the zone. Cross court pass deflected by Clark, that'll go out of bounds. Back to the Mastodons, but only three seconds left on the shot clock. Three seconds and the basketball is being inbounded close to half court. So the Mastodons need a quick shot here. As they get it into Emerson, she turns and fires. No good. Oh, weak side rebound. Almost ended up with two. But off the mark, and here come the Hawkeyes. Clark comes with the ball. She'll try again. Oh, yeah. Caitlin Clark, three more. A three off of a stagger screen in transition. So difficult to defend on the move. Four for five from beyond the arc. And Iowa all of a sudden... Leads by 19. We'll be right back on Flow Hoops. Hawkeyes rolling here in the first.
Caitlin Clark living up to her name. 17 points here in the first half. And still more than five minutes to play. Iowa with a chance to put up 55 or 60 here in the first half. Fort Wayne has found success when they're able to move the basketball. And Stover with the bounce pass. Three from Marshall is good. Louisville native Destiny Marshall provides a response. There's a drop down, low post. And now a kick, Marshall pulls up, no good. Got Marshalls on both sides going at it right now. There's the Mastodons, Marshall. Swings it to Ott and now back to Marshall. Seems like this zone is really slowing them down. Bounce pass. Interior move and swatted by O'Grady. A slew of subs coming in for Purdue Fort Wayne as we get another look at the block. Addison O'Grady keeps her hands up, almost like a volleyball block. Right out of bounds, opportunity to set up a de their defense. So Emerson will trigger. Lobs it up high, nobody home. Chased into the backcourt though, and they'll have it. Three to shoot. And another block. That time it's Martin, and it'll be a shot clock violation. As soon as that basketball went in the backcourt, Fort Wayne was fighting an uphill battle because of the shot clock. So Fearbox sends it in. And Clark brings it up. Iowa fans getting rowdy. There's the lob inside. O'Grady kept it in. Corner three, too strong, loose, and handled by Casey. That pass deflected by Clark. Fort Wayne had the right idea. It looked to score in transition before this Iowa zone can set up. It's really caused problems with their length, their activity. Into the corner. The three comes up short for Bromanchenko, but an offensive rebound, ball is loose, knocked around, and here comes Clark. Fires up ahead, O'Grady is there for the two. Oh, they are jumping on these opportunities in transition. 1-3-1, one, one, really slowing down the Mastodons. Straight line drive for Schwederman, now into the corner. Emerson for three, got it! Emerson now with six. Clark curls. Emerson on her. Shifts directions and we've got a hand check called on Emerson. Emerson did a nice job navigating the stagger screen. First we see the three that goes up. And she immediately went to find Caitlin Clark. That's her defensive matchup right now. I mean, that's not an easy pass we just saw. I mean, that's a 40-foot bounce pass right on the money to O'Grady. Clark steps back, in and out, almost had another. Emerson not wasting any time. Gets it back, gives a fake. This is Woodson. Bounce pass underneath. Schwederman with a good feed. Layup, though, no good. Martin secures it. That was a really nice offensive possession for Fort Wayne. Unfortunately, they couldn't get that layup to go down. Clark right down the middle. Finesses it through with her left. He uses her pivot well. Slices the trap. There's a three on the other side off the mark. Stolke pulls it down with two. Clark already up ahead. Clark knifes through and kicks to the corner. McCabe off the mark, and the Mastodons head back the other way. Broman Schenkel scores. I've been impressed with Broman Schenkel's mentality. She has not backed down to the challenge on the offensive end of scoring against a much bigger defender. Martin 
got blocked and we have a foul. I think we're gonna have a, to have a conversation as two whistles were blown, two Fort Wayne players are on the floor in opposite places. Referees need to be able to sort this out. Yeah, Clark is really frustrated that she got into some contact with her defender. I think they are gonna come over to our monitor and take a look. So they will review a potential uh, foul away from the ball, maybe a flagrant, as we had contact where the shot was and in the backcourt where Clark was going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I believe that was Casey defending her. So what you're watching is what the officials are now watching as they have the headset on and want to take another look at that play. On the reverse angle from the opposite side, I on the baseline camera might be the best look at the extracurriculars with Clark. Amarin, do you know if the initial call was underneath on the shot or do you think it was beyond the arc where they were going at it? I honestly think they happened at the same time. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Obviously, I'm not either. it's a physical game. The Fort call Wayne has no, nothing to lose. Obviously, they want to play a clean game, a legal game. But at the same time, they've got nothing to lose lose they're going to be physical try to get different players different Iowa players out of rhythm out of sync and it's obviously the referees job to make sure that it's done in a legal fashion so you are seeing what the officials are seeing either way it's a foul on Purdue Fort Wayne at a minimum the question is whether it's a shooting foul underneath or something against Clark which they may now elevate to a, a flagrant or an intentional foul and now they're going to ask for an extra opinion as all three officials will get a look at that play. Just more time for the fans here inside Hertz Arena to have a little fun. To get into Cotton Eye Joe. When's the last time you heard this song, John? <laughs> well, I, I happen to attend a lot of minor league baseball <laughs> games throughout the summer, so I've heard it a few times this year at least. But some people getting into it. This is, of course, a hockey arena most of the time. But a great venue. I mean, it holds 9,000. And they have filled it you know, well beyond half here tonight. Great support here in southwest Florida for women's basketball. Obviously, it helps when the number four team comes into the arena and when your local hometown girls, hometown ladies are playing as well. Yeah, a good amount of the FGCU fans have hung around to watch this game. Why wouldn't you? Your ticket gets you into both games. But I think the way you put it initially was perfect. A lot of support for women's hoops down in this region because of what Carl Semesco and his, pro his program have been able to do. They are going to upgrade this to an intentional foul against the Mastodons. So it'll be two shots and the ball for Iowa. And we assume Clark will be the shooter. Oh, it's actually against Clark. And now she's pleading her case to the official take a minute to stand up for Clay Caitlin Clark she's a phenomenal player the best player in the country at this time in my opinion she gets every type of defense every single night yes is it her responsibility to keep her head absolutely but you have to understand how challenging it is when you are being held when you're being swatted at when you feel things are done illegally towards you night in and night out it is hard she is the hunted everywhere she goes on the court as Casey makes the free throw. And, of course, getting a ton of off-court attention, too, whether it be post-game press conferences, interview requests, social media. It's a lot to deal with, especially during the season. I want to stay focused on the basketball, but there's a lot of other moving pieces as Fearbach returns. So the Mastodons have it after the free throws coming off the intentional foul. Stolke closed out. Bromenschenkel hits again. Bromenschenkel has a fantastic touch. She showed us how she can use her pivots. Here she's playing post defense against a much stronger, taller Hannah Stolke. At 13 now for Bromenschenkel to lead the Mastodons. She's technically playing the middle of this 2-3 zone. 
That's Davis lobbing it for Stolke. Beautiful pass and a chance for three. That was a no look pass. High, low, over our shoulder. Molly Davis using a great touch. That's a no look pass too. Leading Stolke to the rim. That almost, I'm no volleyball player here, but that almost looked like when the setter looks to set it, but doesn't, puts it over the net herself. I'm not sure what that's called. That's what it looked like to me. I believe they call that going on two. A little offensive play from the setter. I mean, we've been watching a lot of volleyball here in the fall. NCAA tournament about to get going. Of course, Big Ten, the best volleyball conference in the country. There's a three that comes up short for Emerson. They tried to save it along the end line, but it'll go back to the Hawkeyes. I know they're down 14, but Maria Marquesano has to be pretty happy with her team's effort here. They've been playing hard. They've been getting back in transition defense, taking the open threes. I'm sure ball movement will be something that they've addressed at halftime. Bounce pass to the elbow. Davis drives, puts up the floater, and got it to go. Molly Davis with a beautiful shot. Nice little floater on the baseline. So Iowa with 52 points here in the first half, and they'll have at least one more possession. Emerson swings it to the opposite corner. Casey without a lot of room, and called for a travel. You can see Lisa Bluter coming over to talk to Davis there, who's about to bring it up for the Hawkeyes. No Caitlin Clark at the moment. They'll close out the half without her. But a game-high 19 for Clark. Bounce pass. Stolke lost it. Emerson goes to the floor. Mastodon still fighting for it. That was Casey who rolled over the ball. They will call a jump ball, and it'll go to Purdue-Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne is changing up their defense. That possession was a 3-2. Stolke tried to use the dribble. Quick guards for Fort Wayne were able to eat that dribble, cause that tie up. So Emerson brings it up. They can hold for the final shot. Shot clock is off. Iowa attacks with the top half of their zone. I was bringing the pressure. That's not where you want to go. You want to reverse that ball the other way, right? It's very easy for us to say that. We don't have <laughs> 10 fingers, 10 toes encroaching on our personal space. But, yes, you're correct. <laughs> Ideally, a ball reversal would relieve that pressure. Pass goes to the corner. Woodson off the window. Didn't get the roll. Offensive rebound. No good. Fearbach pulls it down. Two seconds. Davis. Launches and comes up a little bit short. But an outstanding first half from the Iowa Hawkeyes, who will take a 16-point lead into the locker room. Amber is standing by. She will be joined by Coach Bluter in just a moment. Iowa got off to a great start. They've got to be pleased with a lot of things. Let's check in with Amber, who is with Lisa Bluter. Coach, a bit of a slow start there, but your girls seem to have found their rhythm and really get into the play. How do you make sure they come out strong in the second half? I mean, they will. I don't have to worry about that. This group wants to compete. They want to come out here hard. I love the fan support we have here. We've turned this into Carver South. It's amazing. You guys, your defense was great throughout the first half. They allowed zero second chance points for Purdue Fort Wayne. How do you keep them locked in coming through the second half and through the rest of the season? I mean, it's the fundamentals, right? It's all about fundamentals, getting the job done, making sure that we find somebody to hit as soon as that ball goes up. Thank you, Coach. Back to you guys. Thank you, Amber. Yeah, she's loving the support. The energy in this building is great, and a Coach Bluter kind of confirming what we were thinking all along. There's a lot of places, Carver South, Carver North, Carver East, Carver West. She, she does a nice job of complimenting her fans that travel to support her squad. A little positive reinforcement never hurts. Coach Bluter probably pretty thrilled with that start here in half number one. 52-36 the margin. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll come on back in about 13 minutes or so for the start of half number two. Iowa looking to punch their ticket to the semis to take on FGCU tomorrow night.
We're in the security business. Our job is to help people feel safe. Not only our customers, but those who matter most to them. Just like our company does for us. We have great benefits from principal, so I know I'm taken care of. And not just me, but the ones who matter most to me.
Coming to you live here on Flow Hoops. John Vitas welcoming you back inside Hertz Arena, Iowa, holding a 52-36 to lead. Let's send it over to Amber, who had a chance to catch up with Fort Wayne head coach Maria Marquesano. So I got to catch up with coach, and I asked her, you came out strong. How do you keep your team to get to get them to bounce back from that? And she said, it's just the little mistakes that we're doing. Obviously, we can't give up 52 points in a quarter, but the main thing that they need to focus on is stop losing the number one player on the court, and that's Caitlin Clark. They got to keep fighting on getting the rebounds. They got to get more second chance opportunities because Iowa kept them from having zero of those. So she says the second half, we just got to come in. We got to keep fighting and just stop making the silly mistakes and the silly turnovers. Thank you, Amber. Yeah, 52 points and a half, not going to cut it on the defensive end, although I think we've been pretty impressed with their offense. Uh, hitting quite a few threes in that first half, six for 14 from beyond the arc. This is the most lopsided halftime score we've had today, John, and both squads now are playing to their standards. What are their offensive and defensive principles? What are things that they can control to put them in a better position for tomorrow? Step back for Clark, you bet. She bangs one through, and Clark is up over 20 points already. All right on cue to start the second half. Caitlin Clark connects on her fifth three of the game. Davis gets the knock away, and there's the over and back. Coach Bluter was pleading for it and got the call. Tough position there as the ball's deflected. Your momentum's taking you in the backcourt, but you've established position in the front court. That is a violation. So right back where we were, Davis here on the near sideline sends it in. With Kate Martin, the graduate guard, at the controls. Clark comes to the ball, pulls up for three. Oh, yeah, again! Caitlin Clark fading away, drains it. And a timeout right away from the Mastodons. 25 already for Clark. We'll take the timeout with him. You're watching the Gulf Coast Showcase on Flow Hoops. As we bring you back to Estero, Florida, we take a look at our principal expert move of the game. And where else would we go but Caitlin Clark? Again, stagger screens on the weak side. Sellers chose to go underneath. Unfortunately, was burned on that play. When you take care of your team, they take care of business. Learn more at principal.com slash business. We've got all kinds of Caitlin Clark signs here in the arena. We had our fan of the game earlier uh, that had a, a really clever sign that they showed off a young lady, and there's another one for you. I mean, everywhere she goes, she's got fans that come out uh, from that local area. A lot of the folks here uh, coming to see Caitlin tonight are probably from this area. I give Caitlin Clark a lot of credit. She has stepped into the role model for young girls. She's done it with grace. She sticks around, signs autographs. She's got a lot on her shoulders on the court and then being the spokesperson for the women's basketball team, but also empowering young girls, high schoolers, youth. She does a great job. And carrying that title comes with a lot of responsibility. I mean, the pressure that she's dealing with this season is going to be incredible, and she continues to perform on the court, which if you're able to separate some of those things, that really helps. And having a heck of a start to her Gulf Coast Showcase. 25 points as Sellers had it blocked and Stolke rises high. Seven assists already for Clark, but she has that one poked away from behind. Mastodon's headed back the other way. Marshall gives it up. On the ground, this is Broman Schenkel. Sellers with nowhere to go, fended off by Martin. Broman Schenkel pulls the three and connects. That's way too easy. Broman Schenkel has been the offense for Fort Wayne today. Inside, outside, 
Yeah, some early threes from some other people, but since then, Bromachenko has led the way. 16 points for Purdue-Fort Wayne. Clark gets inside, had it blocked. They're going to get Sellers on the foul, who came over crashing to get the block. Marshall's undersized there in the post. Hands up. Caitlin Clark can still elevate over the top. Help needed to come. Clark three for five at the line today. Makes the first. So many of her shots, Marin, are just straight through that perfect splash of the net. As that one drew a little bit of iron, but goes down for her. She works on her game. Out of season, in season. Well, the, the shooting ability is just off the charts. Naismith Player of the Year, Caitlin Clark. 21-point lead now for Iowa. Woodson having some trouble. Emerson curls, beats Broman Schenkel. Trying to get around Martin, gets it poked out of bounds. It'll stay with Purdue Fort Wayne, but only five seconds left to shoot. Broman Schenkel had nowhere to go between Molly Davis and Kate Martin. Taking away her space with a trap. Emerson with two to shoot. Wild hook shot, did draw iron. Ball gets knocked around and Stolke secures it for the Hawkeyes. Clark up ahead, Marshall open, short. Rebound to the Mastodons. That is Woodson changing direction. And now having trouble finding a teammate, lobs to the corner for Emerson. Sellers in on Stolke. Had it knocked away by Clark. It goes out of bounds to Iowa. You want to play fast without playing rushed. Sellers demonstrated great poise, but needed to get rid of the basketball quicker. And once those Mastodons lose their dribble, Hawkeyes are all over them. Extending the arms, cutting off passing lanes. We've seen a lot of these you know, Fort Wayne... Ball handlers get stuck. This is Martin, dishes inside, easy laying for Stolke. Boy, I am amazed, Martin, how transfixed this crowd is on every possession. It's almost like we're at a tennis match where it goes silent during these plays. There's a floater from inside 10 feet. Battle for the rebound, Stolke wins the battle. Clark with it, long three from nearly the logo, not that time. And an offensive rebound for Davis as it was poked out by the Hawkeyes. Davis is looking for the interior pass, able to find Stolke, unable to finish. Credit Hannah Stolke for catching that post entry pass as she takes the seat. And she's done a nice job keeping the ball high on offense and creating a presence down low. She takes a, a breather. Clark gets the <laughs> through the legs pass. Open in the lane, got fouled. Caitlin Clark going back to the free throw line. Oh, this is just the opening act for these Hawkeyes. They can cruise here tonight. They'd get the FGCU Eagles tomorrow. And then a potential rematch against the team that beat them earlier this season in Kansas State. A falter back in replacing Martin. First one is perfect. I was so smart in how they use their substitutions to get Caitlin Clark the extra rest. She's coming out here in the third quarter. The first media timeout has already been called by Fort Wayne, but there will be a floater. There will be another media timeout, and that's why Caitlin Clark is coming out now to buy her a couple more minutes on the bench. Yeah, 90 seconds, two-minute breather as she is up to 29 points. That three a bit too strong from Casey. Offensive rebound to Ott. Spin move, Broman Schenkel had it stripped. Mastodons have it though, Ott off the recovery, splashes it through. 
Ryan Ott with her first points. Fearbach over to get it. Davis on the drive. Davis lost the handle there. She wanted to get it to Sharon Goodman. Here's Marshall backing it out. Inside it goes. Goodman got it up there and draws the foul. Late whistle, but there was contact. So free throws coming for Goodman. Of course, if you're the Mastodons, you have to keep a close eye on the foul situation. Only 10 available players on their sideline as Goodman makes the first. Two players with three fouls, but nobody worse off than that. As Goodman misses the second. And a strong box out from Graber. Broman Schenkel kicks. Step back three. Off the mark, rebound to a falter. Marshall hands, so an offensive foul is called. I think they're going to get Davis for a moving screen. I think it was actually called on Gabby Marshall. <laughs> John, you hear the fans when Caitlin Clark makes a three, and you hear them when they don't like the, the calls <laughs> by the referees. But I think they're calling Gabby Marshall for continuing with contact after she handed the basketball off to Molly Davis. Yeah, you could see her sharing her uh, perspective there with the official as Marshall, the other Marshall goes to the backcourt to get it. It's Marshall on Marshall right now. Wing three is available. A little bit too strong and a foul on the rebound is going to go on Iowa. Coach Bluter is not happy. Neither are the few thousand fans that are in the arena. I saw Molly Davis use her hands down by her shorts, down by her waist, grabbing the Fort Wayne player in that box out. Iowa has not had many fouls in this game, but a couple quick ones there. There's Marshall spinning on Marshall. Righty hook shot off the mark. Battle for the board. Macedon's win that battle. Sellers comes out with it. Casey. Dishes too far for her teammate. Shovel is intercepted, but Davis is out of bounds. And that'll take us to a timeout here at Hertz Arena. It's the Hawkeyes 65 and the Mastodons 42. You're watching the final quarterfinal of the day from the Gulf Coast Showcase. We bring you back to the Gulf Coast Showcase here on Flow Hoops. It's time for our principal expert move of the game. As the loose ball is won by Clark, and there's that long 50-foot bounce pass up ahead to O'Grady. That was late in the first half as we get the, the low perspective of this play as well. And uh, we are very pleased to welcome in Debbie Antonelli. Debbie, I know you're very involved with the tournament. It's great to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much. You guys are doing a great job. I know it's a long day, but we've had some really quality games, and uh, we're really proud of this event and how it's delivered a, a great product so far. 
Yeah, this is the biggest crowd we've had so far this week. The Hawkeyes fans traveling exceptionally well uh, at this stage of where their program is at. Uh, early, a defeat earlier in the season, but that has not deterred them from showing out in force here at Hertz Arena. No, this is a well put together team and it's a well oiled machine that can travel. And this is by far the biggest crowd we've ever had at the Gulf Coast Showcase. And Goodman gets it to drop. And this is a large arena, seats about 9,000, and it is certainly more than half full tonight. Yeah, we're, we're really pleased about how Clarkonomics travels, is what <laughs> I call it. Clarkonomics. Well, we like Clarkonomics. Yes, we do. This is Marshall up top against the Iowa zone. Uh, Sellers with it on the far side, tries to split it, and a travel called on her. Uh, the field this year is as strong as ever. The rise of Kansas State has really brought the group up. You've got three ranked teams. The Eagles, the home team, have already advanced to the semifinals, which sets up an even more exciting couple of days the next two nights. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, this is the quality of play we want to see, and I keep reminding myself it's only November, but... Because the first three weeks of the season, I have seen so much quality basketball, so many good teams, that it makes me feel good about where we're trending when we get to March in the postseason. Bounce pass inside. Good cut by McCabe. Able to gather it along the baseline. Low pass handled. And there is a falter. Knifing to the rim for two. All falter is their muscle. You know, she gives them a punch in the inside, and, and she's a tough rebounder and a tough defender. And a steal quickly from Goodman in the Hawkeyes. Martin across the timeline, swings it to the wing. Three comes up short, Mastodon's control. I know you've been involved with this tournament for quite a while. I know it's going on about a decade here in Southwest Florida. Uh, but a brand new court this year, a huge upgrade, and uh, the teams just continue to get better and better as that one doesn't go for Broman Schenkel. Well, BD Global has done a great job of being a leader in this field and creating quality events for teams to come and participate. And from the very beginning, when Brooks and I were talking about creating some events, we wanted high caliber teams. We wanted good officiating. We wanted to have a destination city. And uh, we wanted to bring a RPI that teams would be able to benefit from from playing in this. And I can tell you from the banner that hangs at the end of the arena that shows you who the champions are in the past, that this has been a very well organized, very highly sought after tournament, and we're really proud of the teams that are that are here. Debbie, you bring up the RPI, and it's so difficult, John and I have talked about, it's so difficult for mid-major, quality mid-major teams to schedule in the non-conference. This tournament allows for that, for that resume building. Yeah, look at Florida Gulf Coast. They can't get any power fives to come and play them. They're too good, right? Nobody wants to come down here and play them, so by playing in this event, they're going to get quality RPI games, and it's going to make them better for their own conference and better prepares them for when the NCAA looks at their net and decides if they're going to be a tournament team or not, should they not win their conference championship. And then on the flip side, for the mid-majors to come down and really test themselves. Yes. Many mid-majors are in one-bid leagues. They understand that, but still getting a quality opponent, testing themselves in a bigger environment bodes well for their confidence, too. I mean, look how well Vermont competed against North Carolina today. And, and look what Delaware did in competing against Florida Gulf Coast. And we're seeing, you know, teams that have come in here that, that are quality players. They can shoot it. They can handle it. And they play a good scheme. And they're well, Western Kentucky, very well prepared when they came in here today. And their guards are small, but they're active, athletic. And that's what you want to see. You want to see teams being able to test themselves against the best. O'Grady oh, slithers inside and finishes with the left hand. And both those mid-major programs you referenced, Debbie, had the lead at the end of one quarter. And, of course, Vermont held the lead until about the three-minute mark of the fourth quarter today against the Tar Heels. Well, as, as Iowa makes it a 30-point lead, right, they just have been uh, so connected and such good rhythm on the offensive end and good balance offensively as well. They share the ball very well. Roman Schenkel got stuck for a moment. They reset with Ott, four to shoot. Roman Schenkel trying to shake the defense, steps back for a three, doesn't get the roll. For Iowa, when you have 16 assists on 25 made baskets, I would say that's a good percentage for them. Oh, no question about it. That one off the heel of the rim. And then on the other side, Purdue, Fort Wayne, they've ma matched the same number of threes that Iowa's made. They both have eight. Did that stay in bounds? No, they're going to say that the Hawkeyes were out. Great effort from a falter, but it'll stay on this end as you get another look 
at that block. Great effort by a vaulter to try and keep it in. Yeah, see, that's the kind of play I'm talking about. Like, the extra effort, the physicality that she plays with. She's got a measure of toughness about her. A different look for Lisa Bluter when she's on the court. Official has come over to the scoring table to check on something. We've gotten our first look here at Jada Jimphy, a sophomore forward who has checked in, but officials are going to try and confirm something over here at the table. Looks like they're um, checking out the time. Might be looking at... And they're over towards the, the stat keepers. So you have to determine if that's a change of possession or not. Did Iowa have possession enough to change the shot clock back to 30 and the officials are going to determine that they did uh no that did that they did not so it's 18 on the shot clock which is the right thing yeah, the just... referee also told coach lita lisa bluter that iowa iowa was on the out of bounds line hence it was not their basketball and in a block they're obviously not enough for possession as casey handles for purdue fort wayne sellers drives the baseline has to kick this is Stover, gets swatted. Big time block from O'Grady, and then a foul as Stover came over to try and get it back. Well, one of the things you have to be better at is playing off two feet and, and not over penetrating when you get inside against the size of Iowa. Purdue Fort Wayne doesn't have a lot of size. They play with five guards and they shoot it well. So they gotta move it, get in the gap and kick. McCabe connects on the first. It's a 14-3 run in the last seven minutes for Iowa. And a 20-6 margin in this third quarter. Second one falls. They continue to play on a pace towards 100. This is Emerson handling. Sellers trying to get to that baseline and lost it out of bounds. Good D moving your feet. Uh, Mastodons 0 for their last 10. Oh, four turnovers in the last seven and a half minutes. And right now, Iowa in full control. Debbie, do you think we'll see Caitlin Clark back out here for uh, one think, more stint? Yeah, I think we will. I think she'll come back to start the fourth quarter. Get a few more minutes. I mean, she's stuck on 29. And yeah, why not get her another 30-point game? Wing three <laughs> rattles in and out. Eight for 12, six for nine from the floor. Yeah, I think she'll play a few more minutes. <laughs> a long one, no good. And a rebound to Jim Fee. She's amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of little girls wearing her jersey in here. There's a lot of grown men wearing her jersey in here. <laughs> and there's a lot of signs. I was struck by the little girl that came out here from Miami that had a sign that she wants to be like Caitlin Clark. That just shows you that it's not just Iowa. And it's she all across the country. She Little she, girls are paying attention. She presented that sign so well, too. They gave her the microphone, and she got to read it at the perfect pace, and I think everybody in here loved that. Participation numbers for girls in basketball has been dropping over the last couple of years, but when you watch little girls and you see the way they, the impact that Caitlin might be having on them, you hope they're getting a ball and dribbling in their driveway. This is certainly an event to remember if you get a chance to come out here this weekend to the Gulf Coast Show Kings. We will hit the fourth quarter when we come on back. It's the Hawkeyes 74 and the Mastodons 42. Clark already checking in here at Hertz Arena.
Shots are falling from everywhere, Marin, Marin Walsh. This young lady has a Caitlin Clark jersey on. She's shooting from half court. It's during the quarter break, but Caitlin Clark <laughs> had her eye out. She stepped out of the team huddle with her hands up, excited for that Clark fan. How awesome is that? It's almost like in Like Mike. Not quite the shoes that make you play like Michael Jordan, but the, the jersey that makes you shoot like Caitlin Clark. Martin brings it across the timeline. There's a lob for Stolke, lost her footing, gets it to go, but they're gonna have to check on her. That is a scary moment. Lisa Bluter is out immediately to take care of her player. Yeah, that she went down hard. Obviously lost her footing there going up. And this will be a good shot coming right at you. Yeah, just a little slip. It seems like she's going to get up right away and put a little weight on that. No reason to keep her in in this game with a healthy lead. And Iowa fans can exhale just a bit as Stokey walks off on her own accord. Of course, again, we've mentioned it throughout the day. This is a hockey arena. There is ice just a couple of inches under the court here. And so there is some condensation that builds up in an arena where, you know, it's 56 degrees until... 5,000 people come in. You've got high-level athletes with body temperatures at 98 degrees on top of that ice. So you do get a little condensation and, and uh, moisture built up on that court. And unfortunately, Stolke found that out the hard way. Good to see her walk off under her own power and with a smile on her face on the bench. Yeah, she seems like she's okay. And again, no reason for her to come back into this one, but should be hopefully Good enough to go tomorrow. That one dumped inside for Goodman. Beautiful pass and a terrific finish for Kate Martin. I've said it before, but it is a luxury to have a post player that has such great touch on those interior passes. Iowa sticking with this zone. Sort of a 1-3-1 one, one, dropping into a 2-3. Mastodons have not been able to solve it since they started using it in the second quarter. Sellers with it. Was their top option early, but instead it's been mostly threes to provide the points for Purdue Fort Wayne. Pull up is no good from Sellers. Iowa leads by 36 now. There's the dump down. Goodman turns and didn't get the roll. Great move, but it doesn't fall. That was a great move. There was no dribble. She used the defender as the access to pivot around. And a takeaway by Iowa. Marshall the other way. Macedon's had numbers, but could not keep it in play. Corner three, short for Davis. Trying to track down her own miss and gets the foul call. That'll be the second foul on Ott. Woodson comes back in along with Graber. Big thanks to Debbie Antonelli for stopping by. Great to visit with her. She'll probably drop in each day on this tournament, a Hall of Fame caliber broadcaster and uh, part of the management team that puts this event together. Clark misses. Offensive rebound. Goodman. No stopping her. A chance for a three-point play. Fought for position. Got that offensive rebound. Kept the basketball high. Great strength. Redshirt Jr. very aware underneath. And with Stolke out, she will play the five and only extending this lead. Hawkeyes are four points away from doubling up the Mastodons after this game was pretty tight early. And it was 10 to 10. They were trading buckets in the first quarter today. And it looks like they're going to use the media timeout here to review something. So there will be a review. You'll get to follow along with the officials on your stream. And we'll take our final media timeout here from Hertz Arena.
John Vitas alongside Baron Walseth here from Estero, Florida, just a, a town south of Fort Myers. Sharon Goodman to the line. The, the review there was to determine who committed the foul, and the answer was Sellers, and she is now fouled out. As Goodman converts on the free throw, five points, four rebounds in 14 minutes for Sellers, who found herself in foul trouble tonight. So that was our only media timeout of the fourth quarter. We will be with you the rest of the way here on Flow Hoops. Stay tuned. Amber Bepko will have a post-game interview with the Hawkeyes. As Goodman pulls down that rebound, Clark trying to save it. So Caitlin Clark gets another stint on the court here, although there's three subs coming in shortly. Clark at 29, as, as Debbie said, just trying to break 30 to add another one of those games to her ledger. There's a wing three from Martin. Maybe not 30 points yet, but that's the eighth assist for Caitlin Clark. So important to the offense, obviously, but she's able to deliver passes to her teammates in their shooting pockets on time, on target. A chance for a double-double with assists for Clark if she can get two more. There's a good feed, an extra pass, and Goodman lays it in. We're in a hockey arena, but I don't know if they'll give Clark the hockey assist on that one. But that's going on a highlight tape for sure. Terrific vision from both, and Iowa is clicking. An eight to nothing run to start the quarter. And then a block, they're gonna get Goodman for the foul. Or make it a 10 to nothing run for Iowa to start the quarter. And you can tell the Purdue Fort Wayne just a little bit out of gas as you see coach Marcus Sano. And applause for Caitlin Clark who with Goodman comes off at the 647 mark here in the fourth. Three games in three days is difficult, regardless of who you are, how many points you score, how good a shape you are in. But it's also an opportunity here for Addison O'Grady and others to gain valuable in-game experience to make this Iowa team even deeper. It is a season low 22 minutes tonight for Caitlin Clark. That's the one category where she would gladly take it being a season low. One less minute than she played against Fairleigh Dickinson in the season opener. And still scored 29, so more points than minutes for Caitlin Clark. This is Marshall crossing over into the lane, lost her footing. That ball goes out of bounds, and it's going to head back the other way. So final minutes here, 6.19 to go. I'm sure Coach Marcusano just wants to see some, you know, X's and O execution for the Mastodons get ready for their matchup tomorrow as they will take on Delaware in our 130 game. What execution, what fundamentals can they shore up that will make tomorrow with that will make tomorrow just easier for them as they're continuing to build? Yeah, Blue Hens are a solid team. We just saw them here in the previous game as that three misses from Fierbach. Inside it goes, righty layup is perfect. That'll break the streak. Aaron Woodson scores the first points of the quarter here for Purdue Fort Wayne. Here's Marshall getting it to Fierbach. O'Grady trying to post up, a falter with it up top. Now Davis, using the screen from O'Grady, crosses over, Davis kicks. Wide open from the corner, but no good. And an offensive rebound for a falter who lays it up and in. Oh, the Hawkeyes are well on their way to triple digits. Casey, dishes, reverse layup is good for Audra Emerson. It's important for Fort Wayne to find a little rhythm here at the end of the game. And a foul is going to be offensive as O'Grady tripped the defender. And here comes some more subs on both sides as McCabe will check back in. As will Fearbach. 
and Jim Fee. Final four and a half minutes here in our nightcap on day one at the Gulf Coast Showcase. And we've got a kick as Graber was trying to feed the corner. So the schedule tomorrow is just about set. We'll have our uh, consolation semifinals in the day session. 11 a.m. will be a pretty darn good matchup. Western Kentucky uh, taking on Vermont. Two teams that really held their own against ranked competition earlier today. Western Kentucky has a dynamic backcourt, feisty, athletic, quick guards in Alexis Mead and Hayes. Man, they were fun to watch, and they will be matched up against a very veteran squad in Vermont. Has a good inside game, hit outside threes, very balanced scoring, well-coached teams that played extremely hard in their first matchup today. Our second game will be between Delaware and these Mastodons. So a quick turnaround for Purdue-Fort Wayne having to come back here at 1.30 tomorrow. And a foul called. That will send Woodson to the free throw line. Any diagnosis in that one? I think Delaware looked pretty strong earlier today against FGCU, but it's really hard to judge the Mastodons against a team like Iowa, one of the top five teams in the country. We saw them play extremely hard well, I got to believe we didn't see their best results, right? Based on the size of the defenders, the quickness that Iowa brings, the transition, the prolific scoring. I think tomorrow, those after those morning games, those two early games are going to be great matchups. Yeah, no question. Uh, Purdue Fort Wayne in this half shooting just four for 25. That is 16%. I almost think you could just throw that out because they're worn down. They're tired. They know that they're down big and they're, they're just not playing. Uh, to their potential here. The first half, probably a better indication of what they're capable of. They really did hang with the Hawkeyes for most of that first quarter. McCabe hoists up the three and caught it. Taylor McCabe for three. Crowd loves it. A young sophomore guard hitting the three. And we've got a foul underneath. And it's going to go against Iowa. That is A.J. Ediger picking up her first. A three for Casey off the mark. Knocked around. And we may have a jump. No, we have a foul as the Macedons got possession. Aaron Woodson will go to the free throw line. Persistent pay, persistence pays off. This Mastodon team, all 10 who have played today, extremely gritty, diving on the floor, wrestling with stronger, taller Iowa players. Nothing to hang their heads about today. All right, Marin, let's get into the night session tomorrow. What a combination of games we have in store. A 5 o'clock tip, two ranked teams, Kansas State, who won by double digits today against Western Kentucky, against UNC as McCabe's three will not count. We've got an offensive foul before the shot away from the ball. Iowa fans don't love it as Purdue-Fort Wayne will get the ball back and we'll get our, our first look of Kenise Johnson, a freshman, coming in for Iowa. But two teams that played very differently today. I thought Kansas State was solid, certainly not their best performance, but more than good enough to win. North Carolina almost got beat today by Vermont. I think we're going to see better versions of themselves playing against those the, the, the ranked opponents. It's different playing against the mid-major teams. What, however you want to say it, coaches don't, wanna, don't always want to admit it, but it's just different. And so UNC is going to be tested with Ayoka Lee and her dominance in the paint. Can Maria Gakdang complement that, counter that? You know, what does that matchup look like? And Kenise Johnson gets her first points right into the game, scoring immediately. That one's knocked away. Oh, boy, these reserves from Iowa playing at the same level as Ediger knocked it away. But those are some good points. I think they're going to have to get more efficiency from both Kellys tomorrow, UNC, if they're going to beat K-State. I was impressed by the size of the Wildcats, not just Lee, but the players on the perimeter as well. I mean, on paper, that's pretty much an even matchup. They're in a very similar spot in the rankings and the teens, depending on what poll you look at. 
Uh, so that's at 5 o'clock tomorrow. That may not have the crowd that our second game does, but it'll be a darn competitive matchup, and most women's hoops fans around the country will certainly be tuned into that. A couple of top 20 teams going head-to-head. -head. And then in the second game, we've got the three-point shooting barrage from everywhere. It'll be fantastic to see Florida Gulf Coast and their style of play. Although it's not the same as Iowa, the fast pace, the electric scoring, well-coached teams that are used to being in these big moments. It's well, unbelievable that it's only the semifinals. I know. It's going to be one heck of a game as we have an offensive foul there. And so Iowa will get it back. I, I would say that I'm intrigued to see how FGCU handles the size of Iowa. But we saw FGCU play Kentucky here in Fort Myers over the weekend. Kentucky's got a lot of size, and that did not bother the Eagles whatsoever. It's a different skill level. Uh, Iowa's size, I think, is different, and the way that they count on their interior players, it's just part of their offense. They go to Stolke. They go to Goodman. They go to O'Grady with regularity. It's part of what they do. There's Jim Fee on the layup. All kinds of post options for Iowa, and that will be something that the Eagles don't normally have to deal with. And so we'll see if they can keep up with Iowa on the offensive end. That is certainly going to be a high-scoring game just because of the sheer amount of possessions we'll see in that one as Casey drains the two. Final two minutes here from Hertz Arena. But we are so excited for those matchups tomorrow night. Marin will be here for all four once again. Max Tanzer will be uh, added to the crew tomorrow for the day session as we have a travel here, and then it'll be the two of us back with you tomorrow and Sunday night. Now, they did say historically the Sunday crowds are a little bit smaller the night before everybody's got to go back to work from Thanksgiving break, but tomorrow night's crowd could be absolutely electric with the local team, a team that's in the NCAA tournament just about every year, and the Eagles against one of the best in the country. As there's a block from behind, and Iowa continues to have their way. Johnson snaps one. Right side, McCabe. No good. Long rebound handled by Graber. Again, Amber Bepko will be joined by the Hawkeyes after this one, so stay tuned for some postgame interviews. Schwederman gives it up. Casey for three. Nope. Casey had a rough night. That's one for seven from behind the three-point line. Well, maybe that'll unlock something for tomorrow. It'll boost her confidence a little bit. Long pass ahead. That one goes down. Woodson scores after the Hawkeyes got a piece of that ball. So I don't know if Iowa will get to 100 here, but they are certainly close. This might be their final possession of the night. Jim Fee for three. You bet. How about that from Jada Jimphy getting Iowa to 98 points? All right, these reserves have come in and played at a high level. Five points now for Jimphy. As Purdue Fort Wayne uses some clock as they can hold this one till the end. So we'll see if they make one more move towards the basket. Casey has it up top with less than 10 seconds. They will throw it away and Iowa will dribble things out. Well, chalk will hold here on day one. We saw some games that were a little more competitive than we expected. But in the end, we've got the matchups we want tomorrow. All eight teams played incredibly hard today, as you would expect in an event such as this. But as you said, the teams that were supposed to take care of business one way or another did. Yeah, Iowa was pushed just a little bit in that first quarter, but otherwise a dominant performance here tonight. 98 to 59 the final tally they will get the fgcu eagles tomorrow where the mastodons as we mentioned earlier will take on the delaware fighting blue hens in our 130 matchup lisa bluter squad gets a lot of credit and she does a fantastic job of complimenting her players the fans but that was win number 499 for coach bluter one more and she hits a huge milestone i'm sure the team has something in store for that but she's so gracious in complimenting others. Yeah, that is a fantastic number, 500 wins. Just remarkable. And look at her just appreciating these fans, her staff waving to each section as they head off. And there will only be more Hawkeye fans here tomorrow night. 
with an even tougher matchup against the FGCU Eagles as Lisa will be kind enough to join Amber Bepko. But before we get to Coach Bluter, Sharon Goodman is joining Amber Bepko as we send it over to Amber. 16 points in 11 minutes. What does it mean to you and how does it feel to have such an impact in such a short amount of time? I mean, that's a lot of my teammates getting me the ball at the right time. But yeah, I mean, we came into this year knowing that the post had to show up and because we had Monica leave. Um, so to be all, I think all of us did what the team needed. You guys are no strangers to quick turnarounds. What is the key to you guys preparing for a big game in such little time? Um, our coach talks about like sometimes you got to prepare physically, but a big piece of it is preparing mentally too. So we'll do film tonight and get ready. A scout is a big part of it. Um, we've already been prepping for the next team, so we'll be ready. Good luck to the rest of your games. Thank you. Coach. Coach, another great win, another game where every single person gets on the court. How important is it to you to be developing your bench players this early in the season and to continue at throughout the rest? Yeah, I think we have great depth and we want to use them, especially when you're playing three games in three days. You really want to be able to save the legs of some of your starters. And so I have really good confidence in my bench. Speaking of starters, Caitlin Clark has yet another great game to no surprise. How much fun is it to coach her and see the impact that she has, not just amongst her players, but the fans? I mean, you got fans making half-court shots out yeah, here. Wasn't that great? I love the kid that made the half-court shot. I think, I think Caitlin wanted to go out there and give her a hug. Um, no, Caitlin is such an exciting player to watch. You just never know what's going to happen. Don't take your eyes off the ball. She's amazing. Thank you so much, and you know, good luck on the rest of the tournament, Coach. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Amber. Coach Bluter, very aware of what's going on around her. So she, of course, was in that huddle and uh, got to see the fan hit the three-point shot or the half-court shot in the Caitlin Clark jersey. And uh, it's, it's awesome to see her carry the torch with this incredible program. It is the Caitlin Clark show on the road so often. But as Sharon Goodman said, with Monica Sanzano graduating... The post play needs to step up, and I think they took a good step in that direction of building the overall team confidence with the loss of Sanzano. Uh, we clearly saw the depth of this Iowa team tonight as well. They are locked and loaded going into the Gulf Coast Showcase semifinals tomorrow night. Your final score, Purdue, Fort Wayne uh, losing to Iowa 98-59. to They will both come back and play on this court tomorrow. That wraps up day one of the Women's Gulf Coast Showcase live from Hertz Arena. We appreciate you tuning in all day here on Flow Hoops. For everybody on our crew, I'm John Vitas saying good night. We will see you for four more games starting tomorrow morning at 11 a.m.